Let's have a go. Here we go. Well, hello there, peeps. How are you doing? I hope we're well. I do. Not got a perfect draft keg review. Not got one. I promised another one for a while. I think it was probably about three. Nah, it must be more than that. Must be five weeks ago. I reviewed the subcompact. And I've not had another top in it since. I've just not. So it's about time. It really is. I did have a few perfect draft kegs to get through. And as you can probably see on that, only a couple of bars left. I'll have to have a few more of those tonight. But I am going to review a sub top. Now, there's not that many, if you're in the UK, kind of mainstream lagers on the perfect draft. I think Bex is definitely mainstream. Um, Bex Gold, a bit less so, but it's still Bex. Bud, but then you don't see it on draft that often. Like, you know, Spaten or Spartan, however you want to call it, your Hertog Jan, uh, your Jupiler, they're all kind of Belgium um, or Dutch beers. And they're the lagers that are on the perfect draft. So you haven't got that many beers that you see generally in UK pubs on draft on the perfect draft. But you have got quite a few on the sub. And, you know, you've got your Heineken on there. And you've got what I'm reviewing now. You've got your Moretti. Now, I've got to say, I do enjoy a Moretti. It is one of those lagers that I would pick if I'm going into a UK pub, I see it on draft, and all they've got is a Foster's, a Carling, a Moretti, and a Heineken. If that is your selection, and I've seen that in a few places, I'd pick a Moretti out of those. Yes, I would. So... I was intrigued, and I am intrigued, of what it's like on the subcompact. So it is your two litres, standard top, and we're looking at £8.49 for that. So a little bit pricey. They do seem pricey, these tops. You can get kind of bulk um, top deals, and I got a party pack with that. So I've got a fair few to get through. Um, so I thought it is time that I got stuck into a few more. Now it is 4.6%, that Moretti that's in there. So same as what you'd get off draft in a pub. And I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued to see what it's like compared to those pub draft pints of Moretti. Now, one thing that I haven't got is a Moretti glass. I've found one that is as similar. I've used it in a few reviews before, but the Sunny Mig glass is as close as we're going to get, people. So that's what I'm using. There she blows. I am a little bit disappointed I've not got a Moretti glass. I did have a look on Amazon. I think you can get them for around about eight quid. But, you know, and I'm not condoning stealing from a bar. I'm really not. But Moretti is very, very common in pubs. So, obviously, originating from Italy, um... You see some kind of fake Morettis now and again, because it is very popular. Um, and also, there's, there's another one come out. It's, it's like Peretti or something. And that's not bad. That's not bad. I'm not saying that's a fake Moretti, because I think that's actually quite good. But there are a few fakes out there, because it is a very popular lager. Now, one to be had with a pizza, with a bowl of pasta, one that is served in your odd Italian restaurant, it's a good Italian beer. I would be interested if I've got any Italian viewers, if it's seen as a good lager over there. Um, don't know if it is or not. Don't know if it is or not. But anyway, I've got some snackage to have afterwards, so I will be enjoying a bit of snackage. Let's get stuck into this Moretti. Let's have a little quick look-see at the old talk. I'll do a pour. I'm going to just give it a little bit of a, a first, because... The sub is a little bit more lively than even the perfect draft on that first pour. So I will give it a little bit of a, a go first and then I'll get the main pour in. I'll bring it in. We'll have a look. I'm expecting some bubs. Number one, because it is quite a lively lager normally anyway. And number two, this Sunny Mig glass is a belter for bubs. It gives a good old hurricane now and again. A little bit like the Stella Chalice. 
So I'll bring it in. We'll have a look at what bulbs we've got. I'll give it a taste. I'll let you know what I think. I'll have some snackage and I'll let you know what I think to that. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so here we blow with the crops. There it is. The light is green. I did install it a little bit earlier um, than what I did with the Pelforth previously. Now this door, it takes a little bit of tugging. I'll be honest with you. But there it is. There's the Biera Moretti. Yeah, sitting proud, sitting in there. It's got some smudge marks on that. Need to get that a bit of a clean. Anyway, we're locked and loaded, people. We're locked and loaded. Okay, let's get stuck in. I'm always a little bit tentative with it. I say always. I've only had one off it before, but I did have a few, as in one talk. I did have a few from that. And I'll be honest with you, being as this tap locks down and I'm used to the perfect draft where it just shoots back up again, I panic a little bit. I'm like, wow, well, that did get some spillage. No spillage this time, hopefully, people. Let's get stuck. Come on. See what I mean? You're down, ain't you? You're down. Just wary of it. You know what I mean? I was a little bit wary. I really was. But I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. Not bad at all. I do see quite a few people still saying that these just give a pint of froth. Now, I did pull a little bit through just to wet the line. But look, it don't. It really don't. That is a nice looking pint. Let's bring her in. So there we are. Look at that. And... Um, you know, I'd say, nah, that's good, isn't it? Look at that. I mean, this glass is a belter, but that is a lovely, lively pint. You would not be unhappy with looking at that in a pub. You'd say, I've got a nice, clean lager there, peeps. I would. I ain't sending that straight back. No way. No way. That, that looks nice. Lovely white head. Good moving bubs going right up the glass. This looks a winner. This looks a winner. Let's see what it tastes like. All right, there we go. So the head's died down a little bit. Not too much, though. Not too much. Happy with the bubs. That's absolute. That's volcano-tastic on those bubs. That's beauty. Right. Good pour. Good pour. And... Just from the feel of it, it does feel a little bit colder, even than, you know, the perfect draft beers that you get. But let's have a go. Here we go. Hey, let's have a go. Mon Dieu Moretti. Whoa. Yes. Yes. I'm going to say yes. That's what I'm saying to that. Crispness. If you had a bag of crisps in that, it would be weird. But it would be, I don't know if it would be less crispy. That is crispy. Cracking carbonation. Absolutely cracking. Mouthfeel is a belter. Beautiful. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that it just seems a bit colder. Have I missed something? Or does that take it down a little bit colder than the perfect draft? I don't know but it's very refreshing. I'm casting my mind, I'm casting my mind to, you know, the last time I had a Moretti in a pub and it wasn't that long ago, honestly. I'm talking only a couple of weeks. 
there's a nice little pub on the corner of my road. That's a bit of an exaggeration. It's a little bit further than that. Not quite walkable distance. That's irrelevant to you. But basically, they do, Moretti, some nice food. Nice foods. Nice food. And I always have it there. And it is nice and fresh. Absolutely beautiful pint. This equals it. It equals it easily. That is pub draft quality. Right there. Right in front of me. That's good. No bad aftertaste at all. Very refreshing. Um, what would I compare it to? I'll tell you what, I'm thinking Hertog. Certainly Jupiler. Um, that, yeah, that's good. That's good. I've not rated or graded or whatever reviewed the, uh, the Stella on the Perfect Draft, but I have had it. I prefer this to that. Oh, I'll tell you, that is good. I'll tell you what, you could whack some of them down. What percentage was it again? Was it 4.6? Yep, 4.6. It's a good session lager, that is. That is good. You know, you get the malt, you get the hops. The crispiness is beautiful. That is a nice, light beer that you can have a fair few of. Happy days. If only, <laughs> I mean, I say that, you have a few of that, it's gone, hasn't it? It's gone. There's the drawback. There's the drawback with those torps, because I can easily have that tonight now, very easily. In fact, I'm recording this, and in 10 minutes' time, England are playing hungry, so that's gone. That torp has gone. That's long gone. Yeah, right. Before I grade it, let's get into some snackage. Now then. I found myself in Tesco's yet again. I might as well live there, especially down the snack aisle. Now, the thing is about this time of year, you can complain until the elf on the shelf is out. You can do that and then you can complain some more if you're doing that. You can complain as much as you like about all the stuff suddenly being on the shelves because it's Christmas. You can. But there is a little gem about this festive season, and that is the food. Who does not like festive food? I, for one, certainly do. Now, I'm all for mince pies. Love them. Bit of heat. Whack them in the microwave. Lob some cream over it. Maybe a bit of brandy butter. I'm yours, yeah? Belter. Love my pies, any pies, but festive pies, happy days. Now, I've reviewed a lot of savoury stuff. I just have, yeah. But the crisps that are out, the nuts that are out, ding, dang, do. There's some belters. And this, I think it is new. They are the Tesco finest range. They are crinkle cut pigs in blankets. <laughs> now, come on. Who does not love a pig in blanket? Probably a vegetarian. But if you are not a vegetarian, then I'm sure you love a pig in blanket. For me, it is one of the differentiators of a festive meal compared to your average Sunday dinner. Pig in blanket, some sprouts, and cranberry. Cranberry sauce with me turkey. I'd rather have chicken than turkey. It's not so dry. But anyway, pigs in blankets are one of my favourite little, little, what am I going to call it? Your pigs in blankets are your little bit of extra, aren't they? I'm just going to call it a little bit of extra. And it's a good one. Right. What I'm thinking these are going to taste like are basically smoky bacon crisps. That I would be a little bit disappointed with because they are the Tesco finest range. And pigs in blankets, you're just hoping the thought of something a little bit different with that flavouring. 
Right, is there any blurb? I wouldn't have thought so. Just bacon and sausage, flavour, crinkle cut potato chips. They are saying our experts work closely with local farmers to select the variety of British potato that gives just the right crunch. Good crunch. You've got to have a good crunch. Each potato is carefully sliced. Not sure I believe that. And fried in small batches under the watchful eye of specially trained friars. <laughs> I'm kind of getting an image of fryer talk having a look over a frying pan. They stir each batch gently, select the best crisps, then tumble them carefully in seasoning for a perfectly even coating. I don't really believe that happens. I think it's all on a conveyor belt, driven by robots, driven by machine. But there we go. That's what they're telling me. Let's get stuck in. Got to get these a whiff. It's a big bag. It's a big bag. Yeah. Basically, initial whiff tasting. Whiff tasting? Initial whiffage is basically smoky bacon crisps. But let's give them a try. Let's go. Okay, good size, good thickness, definitely a good thickness. I mean, you're looking at McCoy-style thickness there, which, let's face it, you can't go wrong. Let's get them in. You know what? Ding dong, merrily on high. Them, they're not just smoky bacon crisps. There is a sausage twang there. Not bad. Right. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Not the best snack I've ever had, but they are making me feel slightly festive, which is good. They're not just smoky bacon crisps, which again is good. I like smoky bacon, don't get me wrong, but if you buy something that is pigs in blanket, you don't just want smoky bacon crisps. They're not going to blow you away. They're nowhere near as good as an actual pig in blanket, but then what is? Um... Not bad. Not a bad beer snack. Good dryage of mouth and that kind of smokiness taste. Yeah. Go well with that. Right. Right, people. That, that's a good one. That is a good one. I like that. I can't downgrade it being as there's not more of it in a talk. That would be unfair. I'm going to give that, and bearing in mind, I'm more of an IPA fan than a lager fan, but I do like a Moretti. I do, and I'm going to give that an 8.5. Solid score, solid score, 8.5, lovely and refreshing. Moretti, you've done me proud. Good stuff. Those crisps... Just for the fact that it is pigs in blankets and I wanted that little bit more. I wanted to really love them. I did. And I didn't love them. I just liked them. I'm going to give them a 6.5. I feel a little bit deflated with them. And I don't want to be deflated with a festive snack. So that's why they get a 6.5. They're not awful. Don't get me wrong. And they've got a nice smiley snowman on there. But it doesn't save them. I'm giving them 6.5. Right. That's it. That's my lot. If you like that video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel. There will be perfect draft keg reviews coming up. Hopefully there's a new keg release very soon. Very soon. Come on, please. There's got to be. Um, there's some more torps coming up as well. Got a few more of them to get through, including a few ciders. 
which will be refreshing and different in terms of my review itch. Okay, so please subscribe to the channel, give that a like, give us a comment, but beyond all of that, people, beyond everything I've just said, please, please have an absolute belter of a weekend. Enjoy. <sighs> let the fire blaze and let the ale flow, people. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good one. Cheers, peeps. Cheers. Thank you.